Welcome back. This is our last video in this series. So if you missed the others, go back and look through the ones from the this week. All week long, we've been talking about how to heal the root if you don't like the fruit. So if you don't like how you've been acting, if you're struggling with self-control or patience or kindness or goodness or gentleness, if you've been talking about people, if you've been um, angry a lot. So if you're struggling with any of those things, we've been figure, trying to work on figuring out how to get to the root issue and pull it out of there so you can act differently. So today, what we're going to talk about is what to do when you don't want it to keep happening. So you've gone through all the steps. You've figured out your roots. You have figured out why you're acting impatiently. You have figured out where you've let the enemy get in. You have discovered ways that you did not realize that you've been judging people. You didn't realize you've been unforgiving. So you've gotten to that place and now you want to see how you can make it different in the future, how you can make sure that you don't keep doing the same things over and over again. You don't keep getting back into judgment. You don't keep getting back into unforgiveness and you don't keep hashing up wounds and getting traumatized by your behavior, you don't keep letting the enemy have a foothold in your life. How do you make that different? All right, so now we're going to go back to Ephesians where we've been all week long, and we're going to get toward the end of Ephesians 6. And there's a verse that a lot of people know, but they only know the one verse, and they don't take it in context with what came before and what comes after. So I'm sure you've heard the verse that says, and having done all to stand, stand. Okay, so everybody knows that verse, right? It's a very common verse. The problem is, what does all mean and how do you stand? Now, all takes us back to the beginning chapters of Ephesians, where he lists all the ways that we need to live now that we're believers and that if we don't do that, the enemy has a foothold. So having done all to stand means have you done all those things? Have you gotten rid of the negative words? Or have you stopped with the coarse jesting? Have you stopped with the anger? Have you stopped yelling at people? Have you stopped with the bitterness? Have you stopped with the judgment and the unforgiveness? Have you done all those things? Now that you've done all those things, now you're going to stand, and it tells us how to stand. Stand with the armor of God, okay? And that's how we keep moving on in the future. But a lot of people don't understand the armor of God because it feels so esoteric. It feels like, oh, a helmet of salvation. What in the world does that mean? Or a belt of truth. What do I do with a belt of truth? Okay, so I'm going to break it down for you step by step of how to walk in the armor of God so that when you've done all those things that were already talked about in Ephesians, you've gotten rid of all the areas where the enemy's gotten in. Okay, now we're going to stand and this is how we're going to do it. Okay, so I've broken it down for you. So listen real carefully. First, we get saved. Okay, that's the very first thing because we protect our head with our salvation. That protects our thoughts and it protects our intentions and our actions. Okay, so that's the helmet of salvation. If you don't have that, none of the rest of this will matter. You have to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's your sword. That's how you're going to fight the enemy. You're going to be able to have your prayer language. You're going to be able to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. You have to get filled with the Holy Spirit to be able to fight off the enemy. Then we have the belt of truth, which means we learn the word because his word is truth. And we can tell that we can discern the truth from a lie. So we keep from losing our pants. All right. So we're not shaming ourselves. So we're not walking around in guilt all the time. We know his word so we can discern the truth from a lie. It keeps us from shameful behavior. All right. If you can think of it that way. Repent every time you recognize an area or you dig out a root 
any of those things that you recognize, repent and deal with it. Remember to renounce it. We walked through those steps of how to repent, how to walk in obedience, how to forgive, how to stop judging, how to renounce the enemy. All right. And every time you remember a wound or a trauma that's been in your life, you deal with it. You deal with the root. You get someone to pray for you and you apologize for your part in it. Okay. Now we protect our hearts our heart, our thoughts, because our heart gives out our thoughts according to scripture. Our thoughts are in our heart, not our mind. By being obedient to the word of God, that is your breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness is right actions. And we protect our thoughts and our intentions, and we protect um, our, our life force by being obedient and doing what he already told us to do. In the beginning of Ephesians, all right? Now what we do is we've got all that done. We've been saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. We've learned the word. We discern the truth from a lie. We repent when we recognize trauma, sin, and every other area. We protect our heart by being obedient to the word of God. And now we speak the truth in power. We walk in obedience. That is our feet shod with the gospel of peace by bringing the message of truth to others. And we proclaim that truth. So instead of allowing lies or deception or evil words or bitter clamoring words or harshness pass our tongue, we speak the truth instead and we speak peace. If you do each of those steps, that's going to lead you into not continuing to allow those bad behaviors that allowed a foothold for the enemy and that grieved the Holy Spirit. Okay, so that is how we keep from doing it again. So we've learned how to test why we don't have all that fruit of the Spirit. We've learned what to do now once we know that we have problems with the fruit of the Spirit, then what do we do to get to the root of why? And now that we've dealt with it, we've dealt with the wounds, we've dealt with the trauma, we've dealt with where we let the enemy come in, and now we're going to walk in the armor of God so that it doesn't happen again. All right, so go to Ephesians again, Ephesians verse six, chapter six, <laughs> and you're gonna learn about the armor of God and how to use it. And um, I hope you guys have been taking notes. I hope you've been commenting on here because it's really helpful to me when you do, um, and subscribing so that you can learn more about how to be free from trauma and wounds that have kept you from acting the way you've wanted to act. All right, so next week we'll talk about something else. I hope that was a blessing to you. Let me know if it was.